Good morning. Oh, wow. That woke everybody up, right? <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to worship today. Uh, if you're visiting with us, we're very glad you are here, and welcome to those joining us online. We're glad that you are here as well. Please take a moment, say hello to somebody you did not walk in the door with. Okay, I just have a couple things to highlight, but first I'm going to let David come on up and give us our financial update for the month. Not touching it. <laughs> Good morning. So we had a nice surprise in December. We had a very good December. And what that meant was that we almost wiped out our total deficit for the year um, with a good offering in December. That's good news. So the net income for the month of December was $6,400. And the year to date is a small negative $361 for the year. Income was up due to once a year contributions and also the um, Christmas gifting. And evidently our 2023 plan worked because our year to date budget, income and expenses were both on target. <clears throat> Project uplift, the balance in the account is 37,600. Income was 1,000 and that's thanks to some memorial gifts. So as we start another year at Trinity, we give thanks for the many gifts given in 2023. 2024 is going to be another challenging year and we will need everyone's generous financial support to maintain our ministries in 2024. If you've picked up or glanced at the budget for 2024 that just came out, you'll see that we are at a shortfall for 2024 so those of you that have not pledged, we still could use your pledges. Turn them in. Stories to share. Are you aware of the many programs and their impact that our Milwaukee Synod of the ELCA supports with the help of our benevolence gifting? Here are just a few I'm gonna share with you. <clears throat> Indigenous ministries meet people's needs. The ELCA has 26 unique indigenous ministries. Lutheran Church of the Great Spirit was planted in Milwaukee as a community with honest energy behind everything they do. The Trinity Lutheran Church Endowment Fund has supported this ministry above and beyond the benevolence that the um, Synod gives. Hepatha Lutheran Church community is rallying um, together to address the lead poisoning issues that has affected children in the area. 30% of the children have been affected by lead poisoning. <clears throat> lead poisoning is a big issue that needs to be addressed with justice, compassion, and community, which the church supports. Breaking the Chains Church. <clears throat> How a prison community garden helps stock food pantries. Prisoners worked the garden at the Felmers O. Cheney Correctional Center in Milwaukee. Breaking the Chains Church. We're excited about the opportunity offered by the garden's harvest to connect the men with the wider community. There were food, food pantries that could use um, the garden's abundance, and TLC has supported Breaking the Chains Church through our own benevolence gifting. Thank you. Thank you, David, and thank you to all of you for your gifting this past year. Uh, this week, um, I'll have open conversations on Wednesday morning. Anybody can drop in at um, Hillside Coffee House from 9.30 to 11.30, and then um, Saturday is our book read. If you are coming for our book read, um, please let me know. Sign up on the yellow sheet so I can uh, have a reservation made for that. 
Um, and then our annual meeting is February 4th, following this worship service. And the annual reports are printed and available on the, in the narthex, uh, where you pick up your bulletins. Um, and also, they will be distributed uh, digitally this week. So uh, all that is available for you to look at before the meeting. Please stand as you are able, and we will begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, wind sweeping over the waters. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God, our rock and refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant. Renew your creation. Restore us that we might proclaim your good news to all. Amen. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. By the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn, 843, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness, and thank you to our band today for leading worship. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Our hymn of praise. Glory to God, glory to God.
Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Jesus, healer of mind and body, we sometimes suffer at the hands of physical, mental, and spiritual ailments. Quiet our minds, still our hearts, and empower our bodies so that we may be whole and healed. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. You may be seated for the lesson. We will read Psalm 89 responsibly. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth, I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant, David. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. A God feared in the council of the holy ones, great and awesome above all those around him. You rule the raging of the sea. When its waves rise, you still them. The heavens are yours. The earth also is yours. The world and all that is in it, you have founded them. You have a mighty arm, strong as your hand, high your right hand. Happy are the people who know the festal shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. For you are the glory of their strength. By your favor, our horn is exalted. Then you spoke in a vision to your faithful one and said, I have set the crown on one who is mighty. I have exalted one chosen from the people. My hand shall always remain with him. My arm also shall strengthen him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. I will set his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. He shall cry to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I will make him the firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. I will establish his line forever in his throne as long as the heavens endure. If his children forsake my law and do not walk according to my ordinances, if they violate my statutes and do not keep my commandments, then I will punish their transgressions with the rod and their iniquity with the fury. But I will not remove him from my steadfast love or be false to my faithfulness. I will not violate my covenant or alter the word that I have forced from my lips. Once and for all, I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His 
It shall be established forever like the moon, an enduring witness in the skies. You have renounced the covenant with your servant. You have defiled his crown in the dust. You have broken through all his walls. You have laid his strongholds in ruins. All who pass by plunder him. He has become the scorn of his neighbors. You have exalted the right hand of his foes. You have made all his enemies to be afraid. Moreover, you have turned back the edge of his sword and you have not supported him in battle. You have removed the scepter from his hand and hurled his throne to the ground. You have cut short the days of his youth, and you have covered him with shame. How long, O Lord, will you hide yourself forever? How long will your heart burn like fire? Remember how short my time is, for what vanity you have created all mortals. Lord, where is your steadfast love of old, which by your faithfulness you swore to David? Remember, O Lord, how your servants become haunted, how I bear my time with nothing, till help of the people. With which your enemies taunt, O Lord, and with in which they taunted the footsteps of your anointed. gospel reading is from Mark chapter 5. Jesus' mission includes foreigners and his authority extends to the casting out of demons. Some who witness Jesus' work are seized with confusion and fear, but the man who was healed is commissioned to give testimony to God's mercy and power. They came to the other side of the lake, to the country of Gerasenes. And when he had stepped out of the boat, immediately a man out of the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. He lived among the tombs, and no one could restrain him e anymore, even with a chain, for he had often been restrained with shackles and chains. But the chains he wrenched apart, and the shackles he broke in pieces, and no one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always howling and bruising himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and bowed down before him, and he shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For he had said to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Then Jesus asked him, what is your name? He replied, replied, My name is Legion, for we are many. He begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now there on the hillside a great herd of swine was feeding, and the unclean spirits begged him, Send us into the swine, let us enter into them. So he gave them permission, and the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine, and the herd, numbering about 2,000, rushed down the steep bank into the lake, and they were drowned in the lake. The swineherds ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came to see what it was that had happened. They came to Jesus and saw the demoniac sitting there, clothed and in his right mind, the very man who had had the legion, and they were afraid. 
Those who had seen what had happened to the demoniac and to the swine reported it. Then they began to beg Jesus to leave their neighborhood. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed by demons begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus refused and said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and what mercy he has shown to you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him, and everyone was amazed. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you. Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who has power over the demons in our lives. Amen. So our story begins, they came to the other side of the sea. There's a little backstory there. Where had they been before? In chapter 4 of Mark, Jesus Jesus spends time teaching the crowds in Galilee using parables. He was teaching about the kingdom of God, teaching them about who he, Jesus, was. He used stories about seeds, about light, about growth and soil. He was teaching them also about who they were in God's kingdom also seeds and light and soil and the sowers of seed and light. It was a bit of a breather from the hectic pace of healing, teaching, and traveling that Jesus and his disciples had been keeping. Then in the evening, after a day of listening and learning, the disciples and Jesus stepped into a boat to travel to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. During the night, a storm came up. The disciples were afraid, but Jesus was sleeping through the storm. They woke Jesus up, fearing that their death was near. And Jesus calms the storm. Peace be still, he says. And he wonders at their fear and at their lack of faith. In turn, the disciples wonder at Jesus' ability to command the elements, the wind and the sea. Who is this Jesus who commands the very elements of nature? These questions will be important as we enter today's story. This is where they are when they step out of that boat onto the other side of the Sea of Galilee stepping into a foreign territory, a non-Jewish territory, the country of the Gerasenes. Immediately upon stepping out of the boat, Jesus is met by a man with an unclean spirit who has been living in the tombs, a man who had been shackled and chained to no avail as he would wrench them apart into pieces No one could restrain him, so he lived in the graveyard among the dead, probably feeling like he was dead himself as the unclean spirits raged within him and he howled and harmed himself because of those unclean spirits. Many people ask me, when we hear stories like this from the Bible, if there are demons and unclean spirits today? Well, I don't presume to know if there are demons like we imagine in this story. I've never encountered any situation that I would identify that way. But I know many cultures around the world allow for demons in their belief systems. But what I do know is that there is plenty of evil in the world. We call it sin. We can name these demons in our world. 
mass shootings and gun violence, human trafficking, economic and sexual exploitation of human beings, even Christian nationalism, wars that kill untold numbers of civilians and children, environmental exploitation, untold numbers of people who live without homes, without food, without clean water, as you'll hear about, clean water, as you'll hear about in a little bit in Tanzania, even here with lead in our water. People who live without health care, without meaningful employment, without education, without livable wages. People who are used and abused for the benefit of another. There is plenty of evil in the world. Call it unclean, call it demonic, for it is. And each one of us is capable of it. For as Martin Luther said, we are all saint and sinner capable of horrible evil as well as great love. Back to our story. Something has a hold on this man living in the tombs. Unclean spirits, demons. Today we might identify it as a mental health disorder. But whatever it is, it is not good. It is not the vision God has for this man. It is not the vision God has for this community. People fear this man. He is taken to the tombs to live among the dead where he cannot hurt anyone else. And when he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and bowed down before him and shouted, what have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? Spirit knows spirit. This unclean spirit immediately recognizes and knows the spirit of God, the spirit of Christ in Jesus. Remember, just the night before, the disciples were wondering, who is this guy who commands the wind and the sea? And here is a demon-possessed man running from the tombs who knows exactly who Jesus is, son of the Most High God. Jesus is one who has power not only over wind and waves, but also over his unclean spirits. The spirits know the power in Jesus and what it could mean for them, and so they plead, don't torment me. Then Jesus asks a simple question of the unclean spirit. He asks for his name. In the ancient world, to know the name of someone, the name of something was to have power over it. Legion, the man answers, for we are many. Jesus now knows his name. Legion not only means many, but to the readers of Mark and Matthew and Luke, a legion was also the name of a section of the Roman army that was occupying the land. A legion comprised of about 6,000 soldiers. And historically, the legion 10th Fratensis of the Roman army participated in the siege and destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD and were stationed in Jerusalem after the war. And their emblem that appeared on banners, coins, and bricks was, you've got it, a pig. This veiled political reference to the occupation by Rome and their oppression would not have been lost on the readers of Mark, Matthew, and Luke. This story is important in all three of the Gospels. Jesus confronts not only natural elements in the wind and the sea, but the spiritual powers that linger in the world. Jesus overcomes the demons that live within us and the demons that live within our society. Well, now, after negotiating with Legion to leave the man and go into the pigs, the unclean spirits 
themselves, send themselves over the cliff and into the sea. It's futile to try and deal with the son of the most high God who has power over them. The man is healed. When the swine herds come to see what has happened, I'm sure they were none too pleased about the loss of their herd. But more importantly, they become the first witnesses to Jesus' power, running to tell those in the city what has happened. The man who lived among the tombs is back to himself. He's in his right mind, he's clothed, he's sitting at Jesus' feet. And when the people come to see, they don't react in awe and wonder. Rather, they are afraid. Who is this one who has this kind of power? They want Jesus to leave. In fact, they beg him to leave. He obliges, but not before commissioning his first disciple to the Decapolis, which was the area of 10 cities, Deca, 10 non-Jewish cities. The healed man, as Jesus commissions him, goes throughout the 10 cities telling the story of what Jesus has done for him. Let's bring this story into our lives. What has Jesus done for us? What has Jesus done for you? Do you have some demons, some unclean spirits from which you need to be liberated? What chains and shackles bind you and need to be broken into pieces? Maybe it's bitterness towards someone who hurt you. Maybe it's fear of what the future brings or anger about something that has happened to you? Are you carrying resentments that bind you, regrets, prejudices toward others, arrogance, shame, addictions, actions and words that have hurt others? Do those demons that dwell in you recognize who Jesus is? Do they recognize that the love of God in Jesus Christ can over overcome them? that Christ can heal those bruises and those wounds. Of course, they won't want to be healed, but do you? Like the man freed from his demons, who now sits at Jesus' feet in his right mind and sharing the story of Jesus so others can experience God's love, his liberation also becomes ours. We can be freed from our own demons with the power that Christ has. We will close with a dialogue called Demons by Pastor Steve Garnis Holmes. And thank you to Patty for helping me out today. Jesus says, let's go to the other side. Into what shadows does he lead me? A part of me, unwell, living amid death, cries out, Who is it? What is its name? He had many demons. Can I see myself as Jesus does, whole, separate from the demons? They are legion, they say, many, Caesars. What demons of empire live in me? Jesus knows my demons, commands them, sends them away. Can I let go? The herd of my old life has been, life has been cast into the abyss. Is this a new creation? Where is my frightening self, sane and presentable? Would I rather not have that one join me? We have asked him to leave. How do we push him away? When he says, no, go home and tell the story. What story would I tell? He says again, let's go to the other side. Of what? Of whom? Am I ready? Will I go? Amen. Our hymn is in the purple books, number 1016. Cast out, O Christ, also up on the screen. Please stand as you are able.
confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for our River of Life milestones. Anybody has a milestone to share, you can come on up. And do that here at the mic. Frank? Welcome. You can use that mic there. Good morning. It seems like I'm always faced with two paths to take negative one or a positive one and uh, you know I go to AA and work a lot on these kinds of things and, and uh, uh, gratefulness is huge and uh, I was aiming to get to a point in life where I'm more grateful more often you know as the, my default state which I have not achieved but I got to tell you you know like I haven't been around here in a while and, uh, and I came to church this morning and uh, thought about how cold it was and somebody's plowing that snow out there I mean somebody's shoveling that you know and and it just you know I I, 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 I you know I do the oh I wish I should have or could have or maybe you know but anyway somebody does that and I'm just so grateful for that and the people that are that are given to the, the congregation that I don't see in other ways it's just tremendous I just come here and take advantage of it when I when I can or when I choose to and uh there, there's a church, a church over by St. Luke's South Shore, Methodist Church over there. there <laughs> talk about struggling. You got one guy that helps out, does everything, and here he is. They got that big corner a lot bigger than this, and he's shoveling all himself. And then, oh my gosh, I just took the time just to personally thank the man, you know, because they kind of, everybody kind of walks by him. You know, used to seeing him there, you don't know, you walk by him, take him for granted. And so, just to those that, to those that give and give again you know this it, it, it helps me see positiveness in the world which is important to me thank you i'm gonna put a stone in yeah. yeah there's a lot of behind the scenes 